looking over an HBCU, overlooking it is just, just ridiculous. There's nothing like it. My four years at Savannah State, I wouldn't trade it even if I had to go do it all over again. We beat Division One school, so we didn't feel like we had anything to prove because we felt like, if anything, they had to prove to us that they could beat us. With the amount of talent that I've I've seen come through, you know, Tennessee State and playing against other HBCUs, it's it's kind of mind blowing. Why it's so important. I mean, I think if you go way back, uh, there were so many young black men and women that could not afford or even the opportunity to go to other institutions, especially in the South. Many people, like minorities, weren't allowed to go to schools with white people, obviously. And going to an HBCU and not having to deal with things like segregation and being comfortable in your skin, I felt like that can bring out the best in a person and help prepare a lot of African Americans and other minorities. I mean, we don't have to look that far back when you think about Alabama when um, George Wallace stood in the doze and he made the, the, he made the statement, segregation today and segregation tomorrow. And look at it from that standpoint. So the HBCUs has always been uh, an important part of, of education for, for African Americans. Growing up, I grew up in a traditional high school and they taught what they taught. And it wasn't until I went to an HBCU that I understood that Black people played a more prominent role in America than I had previously read or I previously knew or even understood. Everybody that was on those campus knew that if you was a Black young man and Black young woman coming to school, that how important getting your education was. So they took personal interest in you on that campus. So I went to predominantly white institutes all the way on from elementary school to high school. So I never really got that experience to be comfortable and be around a lot of people that look just like me. I had professors and doctors that believed in me, that pushed in, in the right direction. And they stayed on me. They made like, yeah, Mr. Sharp, I know you want to you know, go play in the NFL, but we want you to get a degree also. And that made me feel good that they were rooting for me, not on, not on the field, but they were rooting for me off the field. They wanted to make sure when you left that campus, you was equipped, not so much from a standpoint of because you're Black, but because you're going out in America and you got to be able to survive. Just being around people that genuinely want the best for you on and off the field, I, I, I would choose a HBCU 10 times out of the 10. The impact of, of athletes on the Black College campus back in those days was great. It was a homecoming family reunion at every game. It didn't matter. There's a stigma that, you know, the athletes are not as talented. They're not as fast. They don't jump as high. They don't, you know, they don't do a lot of things that you do. They do at Michigan or Notre Dame or Nebraska. Uh, yeah, they do. They still play football. You know, I was fortunate enough my freshman year in college to play against Walter Payton and Robert Bazil. Both of them was drafted in the top 10. I think that will tell you what kind of athletes we had on campus. Dating back to, you know, the 40s and 50s, you know, the NFL kind of tapped into that pipeline, you know, of grabbing HBCU players. You know, some of the players that couldn't go to the Alabamas or the Oklahomas of the world, they tapped in and found, you know, a, a handful of, especially Hall of Famers. Talent is talent. And if you can play, you can play. And my coaches, I felt they could coach and they put me in the best situation so I could have success. So for me, it was all about getting an opportunity. And when the opportunity presented itself, taking advantage of that opportunity, knowing that eyes are on me. And so I want them to say, okay, oh, that's what Savannah, Savannah State produced. Let's go back down there and see if they got any more of those guys that can run, jump and catch and can help our team win football games. That pipeline is so important. And there's obviously, you know, still guys that attend HBCUs, hidden gems. I think HBCUs are relevant in, in sports and in today's game because it gives more people an opportunity to play. All of them are not going to be able to play at Power 5 school. Now, from a recruiting standpoint, let's face it, we don't, we don't get the athletes that we used to get. But I think if you give a guy an opportunity, uh, he'll work his way up. You don't have to go to Michigan. You don't have to go to Alabama. You can choose to go there. But if you're good, if you're as good as you think you are, they'll find you wherever you are. Going to HBCU, so it's so tight and you feel the support of everybody around you. So it's just, it's no other way to describe how it feels. And so I think it's very important to HBCUs 
plays a vital role in the education of young black men and women. And I understand that all, not only black men and women go to HBCUs, but they play a very important role because it teaches us the importance of black people and what we've done and what we're capable of doing in America.